So we want to start off this um, the drafting of this corset gown. So you can see it's a pointy corset with Queen Anne neckline. Okay, so, so this is actually very creative. So I'll be showing you the easiest way to go about this gown. It's a corset gown. Okay. All right. So now I've already made my basic line. And this is my starting uh, point, which is the shoulder line. This is the chest line. This is my bust point, my under bust point, my waistline. We are drafting this for the front. This is my hip position. This is my knee. That is above the knee. Four inches above the knee. What I mean by that is my, my knee is 41. This is my hip position at 29. My actual knee, where my knee position is, is 41. You have to count 1, 2, 3, 4 to have this knee line. Then I'll be using the full length of this pepper as the full length of this gown. It's actually a pencil gown. So now... I've already imputed my shoulder divide by two, as you can see right here. And I've already imputed my armhole. Of course, you know how to go about it. My neckline is three inches for now. It's a queen and neckline, so I'm not going to go further, making further neckline. So my uh, round boss divide by four is ten. My actual hip divided by four is nine and a half. My actual waist, sorry. My hip circumference divided by four here is eleven and a half. I will mark. Then I have eleven and a half here. On the knee, I will take away one and a half from eleven and a half. I believe you understand. My hip is eleven and a half. So I'm going to do eleven point five. Minus 1.5 to get my knee. So if I do that, I'll be having 10 inches. So I'll just go ahead and mark 10 inches on the knee line. And I'll also mark that same 10 inches on my hem line. Okay. So that is how to go about the drafting of this gown. So from my hem, I'll just connect a straight line from my hem. Then from the... From the hip, I will go up by 2 inches before I connect to have my upper hip. Can you see? From my hip. So I'll just go ahead and draw my, my line indicating my upper hip. So whatever measurement I have on my lower hip here, 11 and a half, I'll transfer it back to the upper hip this way. Then I'll do this. And then... I bring in my ruler from there to you see how I place my ruler I'll connect it to the hip position then I'll come back with my ruler this way you can see how I'm placing my ruler I'll connect it back to form the hip so this is where the hip is going to sit for the front of this dress then I'm going to go this way can you see I'm going to go this way and connect to the hip. So I'm, I'll be showing you the easiest method to go about the drafting of this corset. So after you have done this, the next thing you are going to do is to come to your bust point line and mark your bust, uh, bust um, span. My bust span is 7. Divide by 2 is 3.5. I'll just go ahead and make a mark. My On the waist, I'll mark that bust span again. So once I've done that, I'll just go ahead and rule a line. This line, I'll just use broken lines for it because actually I'm not creating any that for this dress. I'll just use my uh, brack up to achieve what I want to achieve very easily right here. So while I have to make um, this my boss pan is to make it easy for me to locate the where I'm going to place my brack up. So from the, we are going to make the connection of this on the chest line. So normally when we are making a corset, from the chest line, you come in by 0 0.5 inch. 
So this 0 0.5 inch is going to be the center boning line for this um, corset. So I'll drop it at this point, then I'll come up with my bra cup. So I'm going to sit my bra cup on the, the for before you choose your bra cup, please make sure you watch the video. I'll be dropping the link on the description box below on the best uh, way to choose your bra cup, your uh, um, actual bra cup for your size. So make sure you watch that video so you'll be able to know which bra cup you'll be using for this project. So you can see how I dropped it. I dropped it at the under bust line and I make sure it touch this line. So I'll just take the shape of my bra cup as you can see. I'll take the shape of this bra cup. Okay, so with this method, you'll be able to make any corset of your choice and style it the way you want. So I find it very helpful and that is where I'm, uh, why I'm sharing it with you. So now, this is where I have the bra cup seated. So at this point, the bra cup stops. That is where we are going to have our new line. So I will not make use of this line again, as you can see me taking it off. So I'll now take off my bra cup because I've actually gotten what I want. Let's cup. I want you to do this before you take it off. Okay, so this, what I'm about to do now is very important. So I place back the, that bra cup and you notice that this is where it stops. Okay, and it stops at this point. Please, because we are working with our bra cup, do this. Can you see? So you are going to see why we did this. So what I did is just to draw out the bust area. That is what I did there. So this will enable us now to construct whatever thing we want to do or construct for this particular dress. So after that, the next I will do is to come over to the shoulder line. Note that this is my 3 inches shoulder width. So I will come from here to here. Divide what I have here by 2. This is the midline. So once I've done that, I'll go ahead and do what? Connect this midline straight. So that will now help us to create this design we are looking for. I connected it to the bust point. So now we want to, want to start off um, constructing the pointy corset. So for this pointy corset, the first thing I will do, I just want to ignore this line, okay? I was thinking I, I'm going to make use of it. So you have to keep your ruler straight on the bust point and extend this line, okay? So you can see I've extended this line. But I'm going to take my measurement from the shoulder at four and a half. That is the extension where I want the line to stop. So I will stop the extension of this line at four and a half. Okay. So once I've stopped it at four and a half inches, from here to here, four and a half inches, bust pan, I'll place my ruler this way. From this part, we have them um, the corset stop. I'm going to place it this way, the way it is right there on the thumbnail. I will connect. I place my ruler this way once again to the armhole as you can see so I just place it at the armhole and I'll connect to get the pointy bust here then I'm going to extend this line to touch this line can you see so please take note of that so I will name this one and I'll name this two so these are part of the corset so these two comprises of what we have here okay which we are going to use our bra cup to create and the one comprises of what we have from here to here which we are going to cut off so you see how we are going to achieve this at the end of the day so the next thing i'll come to these three inches now and i'm going to connect these three inches directly from here it will go all the way into the armhole as well okay so i'll have it touch this part so this is how um, this is actually going to look. So, but I, if you look at that dress, somehow, somehow, uh, this gap we have here, I think is too much for this Queen Anne. So what I will do is this, I'm going to reconnect this. So from here, where I have the corset, I'll just come in by one and a half. That is from this point, I'll come in by one and a half. I think it, it will be better for a better 
construction. So I'll keep my ruler this way. Let me use the straight part of it. Because that part is actually straight. So this is the line I'm going to use. So this is better. So I'll take off this line. So this becomes the yoke. So I believe you understand. So from here to this one and half. Okay, people. So we are done right now. And that is all you need for this dress. So I'll be showing you how to use this bra cup here to create that perfect design without having any doubt or without, you know, trying to trouble yourself with calculations of that, you know, and all that. So I'll come in with my masking tape. I think I've done something like this. I've done something like this so many times on my channel. So if you have been following Sim Right Fashion Academy YouTube channel, so I would advise you to always turn on your notification bell to receive beautiful videos like this. So this is actually very, very creative. So once you have gotten your actual bra cup size, like I said before, Try and go back to the video on the description box below to check out how you can choose your appropriate bra cup size in the market. So this is it. your boss pan this is the boss pan line and draw a straight line that is exactly what i did here and now i'm going to connect that cover see if i'm making a princess that okay so i'll take it this way can you see i'll take it this way so this curve i have here by the time i cut off this side and join this fabric i'll be able to have exactly what i'm looking for on this pattern so you see how I took it. I took it as if I'm making a princess that from here with it. Okay. So that is the only way you can have it this way. So if, uh, I don't want to make it a three part corset. If I want to make it a three part, I'll just start designing it. So whatever design you want to make with this method, we are good to go. Right now, I'm going to mark, make a... Um, um, pointy arrows for my boss point so when I see that I will know that is my boss point and here on the upper side I'll just make double arrow that is my upper side so the part without the the lines is my down part so of course you understand what I mean is you need to identify the up and the up so you know that this part is the down and you need to identify the side and the side so whatever mark you want to make so you'd not be confused at the end of the day please do that so i'll take off my bra cup now so i have really found this method very easy for making corsets so you can enjoy designing your corsets any style you want using this method so this is it can you see so please don't allow it to squeeze so the way it is right here you cannot just place it on fabric and start to cut you need to cut it out and join it back so that is why i have to make this line so i'll just go here on that line gently and gently and gently and gently I cut off so once I've cut off I place it on a flat surface this way place it on a separate flat surface this way okay so please don't allow it to squeeze much so you don't have it shrinking so that become, becomes our pattern now so I just go ahead and trim what I have there like I'll just cut it so that will be my pattern so when you want to be creative with causes like this this method is very easy 
So you don't need to start, you know, cracking your brain to make um, massive calculations like that, like that. All right, so this is it. I will set it aside, okay? So when, when I join it, you can see the that is there. So let me set it aside, then we'll go over to the pattern. So here is what we are going to have at the end of the day. So assuming you're making a that, of course, you know how to go about it. So the next I will do is to cut out this pattern. So like I said, it's actually a Queen Anne pointy corset gown okay as you can see right there on the thumbnail there is much creativity to it so i'm just taking my time to do this i'll just come to the armhole here of course it's going to have a sleeve so you can go about the sleeve yourself so i'll just go here and stop here for now okay so once that is done, I'll now come in here, go in here to bring out the number one, which is the pointy corset, which we are going to use to attach. Okay, so I set this one aside, which is the yoke. Then I'll come over to here. And cut here this way. That's why I have to cut this on camera for you to see. Can you see? Then this one, I'll set it aside number one with the yoke. We'll come back to it anyway. Then this part number two has been replaced with the masking tape. So once I cut it out, because it has been re replaced with the masking tape, I'll throw it away. Can you see? I'll throw it away. We don't need it. So what we need now is the body corset. We need the body corset. Can you see? So I'll just do this. Go on the side. Okay, this is actually a fitted gown. So I didn't add any ease to it. And of course I know you know why. So it's a pencil gown. So I'll just go about it this way. Then the center front of this dress is going to be on fold. So if you're actually making this dress, note that you place the center front on fold. So if you're a beginner in this class and you want to learn how to make perfect gowns, we have our ongoing gown series training on Telegram. You can also join us to learn more. So here will be on fold for your gown. So this is the body gown from the corset point to the full length so i set it aside as well then i'll come back with what i have right here okay so this is the cousin we have right there so i'll just simply join this part okay so this is how i'm going to join it this part i'll just go ahead and make a mark on it this way that's how i'm going to cut it off now so i'll first turn it this way and use my masking tape to seal it off so it becomes one full corset to sew with I believe you understand what I'm saying. So it becomes one full corset to sew with now. Okay. So this is it. So I'll feel free to continue the cutting this way. So when I'm going to cut out this, whether uh, I'm going to use my wording. Okay. I'm going to double my wording, my wording, double them like three or four of it. Of course, you know what the wording is because of this shape. You might actually not really need a bra cup for it, but you can still use your bra cup for it, fine and good. But with your wording, once you join it, it gives you that perfect result. So now, 
once you have joined this part next is to this is how it was before i'll now simply bring this to meet up with what i have here okay because the joining of this from the center front will go all the way to form one full corset as we have this is the center front area please correct that side and center front that's what i meant to say so i'll just turn it this way from the beginning of that i'll go ahead and lay my masking tape as well like that so i'll just arrange it appropriately make sure you don't give any gap to it so i'll just arrange it appropriately from this point to this point with no gaps okay okay so i'll just Okay, this one was supposed to be here. Okay, so I believe you understand. So it's just a continuation. So, so you, I believe you just understand what I did here. Okay, so make sure you have the line the way it should. All right. So once you are done joining it, it becomes one full corset for you. So by the time we come in with it this way, this is how it was. By the time you sew from here, you know how you sew your corset, you go this way, that way. This becomes the center front, okay? So everything lies this way. All right, so we are done with the front. So you can see how easy this actually looks like. This is the full pattern, which we are going to sew right here. And then finally, the yoke will be sewn. That's after making the corset, the yoke will be sewn. So this is the pattern. Of course, you know how to go about your corset, okay? So this pointy corset, this is how you can achieve it, okay? So this part will be fully sewn this way. And then you have the yoke this way. All right, so let's go back to the back right now. So the back is very simple too. All you need to do is to draw your lines. Of course, you are familiar with these lines. The shoulder, the chest, the uh, waist for the back. We don't need bust point and under bust because there's no bust on the front. This is the hip and this is the knee position, okay, which is four inches above the knee. And this is our full length. So, I've already uh, gotten my shoulder measurement and my neckline remains the same, okay? Neckline remains 3 inches. Then the midline, I found the midline of my armhole. For the back armhole, I'm coming in by half an inch. So, once I've done that, I'll connect it this way. And then I'm going to impute my bust divide by 4. So, bust divided by 4 is 10 inches. Waist divided by 4 is 9 and a half. Remember, know that the hip divided by 4 is 11 and a half. Then I, I took away 1 and a half, if you remember. It gave me 10 inches for the front. And I do the same here, 10 inches for the full length. So, I'll just connect straight line to my full length. The same way I did for the front. I'll just come in on the waistline this way. Always note how the rulers are placed. Then I'll come up 2 inches from my hip line. 2 inches on the hip line this way. And rule my line across. So I'll measure what I have. My hip divided by 4. I'll place it right here and then have a straight line this way then i'll go this way into my waist position and then i'll go this way into my my armhole to have that shape and then i'll go ahead and round off my armhole as you can see 
So this is easy and simple. Now, for the if you look at the back, you see there is a lesson for the back. So that lesson we are going to have for the back. This is what I go, I'm going to do for you. First, I'll create my neckline at one inch before I start to place my lesson. I'll go ahead and do this, as you can see, normally. So this is the center back. But the lesson goes all the way on the neckline. It's a high neckline because it's a queen and neckline on the front. So it's usually, it usually goes with a high neckline. So from here, I'll come in by two inches. That is how far I want my, or let me do one and a half because that lesson is not much. I'll come in here by one and a half. So when you open it, you have three inches lesson. If you want it wider, you can increase one and a half to two inches. But for this class, I'll just use one and a half all the way to the upper hip line. Okay, this is my hip line, but I'll have it done at the upper hip line. So I'll just connect a straight line for my lesson. That is my corset lesson. I'll have it run all the way from here, somewhere here. Then I'll cuff this part, as you can see right there on the thumbnail. I'll just do a little curve. So I'm just finding the curve part that will, can you see? So that becomes it. So the rest of this part will be joined together. So we'll be having the lessons this way. Of course, you know how we lace it. I believe you understand what you are just seeing right there. Everything goes this way to the end. So once I'm cutting this dress now, this is how I'm going to cut it. Because this is all we need for the back. And it's as simple as what you are seeing me do right here. So all you need to do is place this on fabric. And so, at the end of the day, I would like to see your, the outcome of this dress on the WhatsApp page. So, if you have not joined our WhatsApp, you will have the, uh, the link on the description page to join us. So, there you can also uh, post some of the styles you would want me to illustrate, apart from the styles we have in our paid classes. So I just go here, this way, this way, like this, and cut out. That is how this back will go. Can you see? So this becomes the lesson, and this becomes the center back. So you are going to sew it to you have the, the opening, okay? That center opening, you stop at where you want the slits to be. So this becomes the pattern for the back, as you can see. So it's quite very simple. So now we want to create that, we like call it the cage art. So of course you see the what we have from the on the front area, okay? So that stuff we have from, that forms the basque. I'll bring in the front pattern to demonstrate to you how to go about that. This dress is not splitted to attach that. It's sewn right on top of it. So when you are sewing this, this is the waistline. It depends on how you want, how down you want to sew this. So I will always prefer to come down, let me say, at 6 inches. And then from these 6 inches, you can now form the basque right on your dress. After cutting this pattern, you just use your chalk line. You are not cutting off anything, please. Okay, we are not cutting anything, please. So for the, that create, um, for the creating of that design, once you have marked this line on your pattern, just go to the hem, the length of this dress, take the measurement of these two here. I have 26. From this 26, I will take the measurement till I get here. And here I have 38. So on this way, from here to here, I have 26. Let me have it separately, okay? Because the way you are we are going to create this, we are going to create it separately too. So let me measure this differently. Here I have, um, let me say I have 11.5. Then, note that that design came all the way at 26. And from here, you now fold it this way. And it goes right to the back too. 
it goes right to the back too. So if it's going to be on the waistline, then it means we'll also determine where the bust for the waistline is going to be. Of course, the bust is a curve line. So if I have the front this way, then the back, I'm going to curve in the back now. All right, people. So I just want to make um, a little correction. Okay, this um, bust for the front, it was not connected to the waist. It was connected about two inches below the waist. So on your waist for the front, just simply step down by two and a half. Let me do two and a half, okay? Then I'll come down from here by two inches. Okay, that's everything from the waist should be about, um, I had it at six inches before. Okay, so it's not supposed to be too deep anyway. So if you come down by two inches from here, since we have six, let me do eight. Okay, so we'll have that curvy uh, 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 corset. Okay, so we are not going with this anymore unless you want to have this done at the waist. Okay, but for what I'm seeing right there, that running is two inches below, two and a half inches and eight inches at the center. So if that is the case, then it means the back two will be two and a half inches from the waist. Two and a half inches from the waist, from here to here, two and a half. Then this one has um, uh, a curve. Okay, so if you look at where the slit is, so the slit is somewhere on the knee line but i'll just above the knee i'll just come up a little bit so i'll have the slit at this point so for this you can see i'll just freehand it because what i have on my ruler might not actually give me what i want so this is how it went for for this so i'm going to take the measurement of what i have on this line to here so if you look at this dress you can see it's actually very intensive okay is actually a detailed uh, corset so here I have 19 and a half so let me do it 20 inches so these figures I have here I'll be using these figures right now to create my so right now I'm going to show you how to go about uh, that design but I'll just do it in a smaller scale because I don't actually have um, much pepper to so the fabric you are going to make you just just fold that fabric by two as you can see me do with this pepper right here so once you have so, uh, folded the fabric at this um, uh, point of this or the, of the fabric just go ahead and measure Take the measurement of the what we have on the length of the front, the length of the front to the point we have the bask. Okay, I'm going to retake it because you can't see this line. So now we have it at 24. So I have it at 24 inches now, and the bask from here now is the same 11. Point five. Okay, so I'm working with 24 inches as the first measurement. So from this, um, this is the full length. Okay, that's the down part of this. So I'll measure 24 inches. So like I said, I'm using a small scale to demonstrate this. So I'll just use 15 inches to represent my 24 inches. Okay. So at this 15 inches right now, I'm going to make an inches a mark. Then on the basque line, we have 11 and a half inches. So that is after 24, which I measured at this point. I'm going to take the measurement of my basque at 11 and a half so from here like i said i don't have enough paper to demonstrate this so i'll just go by eight inches to demonstrate my back back line so at that eight inches that is my 11.5 i'll just make a line on my uh, pattern this way 
Okay. So the width of this dress, okay, you are going to make use of um, five inches for it. Five inches is okay. So by the time you open it, you have ten inches. So that five inches, I'm going to extend the five inches line this way till I get to this point, which I have twenty-four, and I will mark. Then from this line, okay, I'm going to measure ten inches from this line. I'll just measure ten inches, and I'll mark. Then I'll connect that ten inches line to this line this way. Can you see that? Then from here to here is going to serve as the measurement of my bask for the back and the measurements I have here. All the measurements I have here, which is the back from, from the back, will be this 20 inches. I believe you. So now, once you are done connecting uh, on the 11.5 line, then you connect, you take your measurements at 10 inches and then connect this to this okay so after that the length of what you are going to have here is going to be the length of the bust for the back which i measured at 20 inches so i'll now pretend from here to here the full length for the back is my 20 inches so this 20 inches line i'll just go ahead and connect this two from here to here, I will go in by one and a half. And that one and a half, I'll just connect it this way to this pointy part. I believe you understand that. So now, the next thing I'm going to do is to shape it. If you look at that dress, you can see that it is not equal at the front. That design is not equal. So I'll just do three inches. So when I open the tip of it, I'll have six inches. So I'll connect it this way. I'll blend it back this way. So I no longer need this line right now. So this is the actual shape we have. Then the next thing I'm going to do, I'll be taking the measurement of what I have here, which is 5 inches. I'll do this. This is what I'll do from here, 5 inches. 5 inches, okay? 5 inches. 5 inches from here. I'll mark um, five. Okay, here I'll just mark. Um, I'll just do this. This is what I actually want to do. Okay, so I'll just connect the five inches I got from here this way. I won't measure here. Then I'll start my five inches here again. Five inches this way. Five inches. So what, what I'm doing here is like when you are making a cage address, if you actually want that part to rest on your on the hip at, uh, very well, you need to do or create something like this, that curve. So if you are familiar with cage art, you understand what I'm doing here. So I just took the measurement of what I have here all around. So if you also want this part to be a little bit longer, Instead of measuring 5 in inches, once I get to this 5 inches, I'll come in a little. So I just feel like reducing it at that point. So here will be longer for us. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open the back of this. Okay, let me just cut out the shape. So you see, actually see the shape. So what I'm creating here is the base for that design is the base for this design so i'll just cut out the base for this design as you can see then i'll now come in from here and cut out the part that will rest on the hip line i'll just cut it out to the back line okay so by the time we place this on the hip this is what we are going to so i'll just open up the back because this back will go directly so I can just blend out this pointy part. Don't give it any pointy shape, okay? So this is the shape we have. And that is how it's going to rest on the hip. So by the time it goes this way, can you see? By the time we uh, attach it on the center front of the dress, let me say the dress 
has been sewn okay before you close the center back this is the center front area so like i said this is a small scale of course you understand so this 24 inches length will just rest here once you get here you take this this way can you see because i'm not working with the actual length you will not you will not appreciate this but if this is the actual length this part now will be resting on this hip line this way i believe you understand it it will be resting from this point this way can you see that's how it's going to rest so use your actual measurements and at the end of the day you'll be glad you watch this tutorial so this is the base we just created now we want to start creating that design on top of this base so to create that design you just make a mark right here and i'll be creating this design the way i see it right there so from here i'll do something like this i'll do something like this so the width i want to use for this is the width of my ruler okay i want to make it easy for me so i'll just place my ruler there and i'll keep marking the width of my ruler okay so i'll just keep marking the width of my ruler see okay so if you actually want to make this dress especially this part i'm making now you need more hands to help you make it okay so this is just pattern the pattern of that design which i'm creating so all of this design right now we are going to cut it out okay with separate fabric and turn it and then begin to place them one after the other so this is a front design and the back design is by choice you can make any design of your choice you can just continue making the lines this way you can make any design of your choice but i'm just giving you an idea of what you can make for this design okay so you can just keep going this way that way you know that way so you can look at the dress very well and look at how the design is patterned so when you come here you continue that way so whatever you rule here on this base that is where you are going to place all these short shots um uh, pieces of fabric you are going to cut that's how you are going to place it so i'm just really need for you can just look at that picture and create the design this is just an idea i am creating so now if you have your fabric that you want to work with let me say i'm working with this fabric now once i come with my fabric and i want to make this particular one or this one so i'll now come in and fold my fabric this way i'll fold my fabric this way okay so i'll just come in with that my ruler this way then i'll add my seam allowance i'm adding my seam allowance now so once i fold my fabric i place my ruler and add my seam allowance i i placed half an inch i added half an inch because that is what i'm going to sew with so i just do this So if you look at the measurements we have, so these are this is how you are going to cut out your fabric pieces. Okay, so once you go over to your machine, you can you know run the stitches and turn. That is if you want. But if you don't want, you can just stitch it together and search them. Okay, search them. So this is the pattern as you can see, and this is the shape you'll be having on that pattern. So here is going to rest on the hip. To give you that design so now i'm cutting two of this one will serve as lining and one will serve as base so you cut this pattern two or three on your fabric you are going to stay your fabric with your hair stay okay or your peplum stay anything stay you want you can stay it but this is going to be two pieces of fabric 
then for the lining part you just set it aside there won't be any stay for it but for this you have a stay at the back of your fabric then you come in with your pieces so once you go to your machine you follow all of these lines so on your machine you first sew this line okay for now we'll leave this because we just cut out the shape of this to sew uh, to attach or if you once you can just cut out exactly this triangle and fix it on that part, stitch it this way as a starting base. So, but from here, I'm going to do this. I'll do this and I'll stitch on my machine. Once I've done that, the next, I'll come in with it this way. I'm going to align it this way. Okay, so make sure you turn it to have that shape. Okay. So as I'm aligning it this way, I'm making sure I have this V shape on this line. So once I'm done with that, I'll come in with the next one, following this line again. And I'm going to place it this way. Can you see? So once I've placed it this way, I'll come in with the next one right now. And I'll place it this way. Can you see? one on top of the other 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 so when i come in with this one i'll still follow this line okay then i'm going to stitch on my machine this way just a little above so it will co keep covering like that so once i've done that okay so all these things you are going to stitch them take note i'm not actually making Something serious, eh? but with what I have here, I believe you understand what I'm, I'm talking about here. I don't have much fabric to continue, but the next one, you place it on top to cover the stitching line. If you follow this principle, you'll be able to cover especially these parts that are crossing each other. For this part, you just keep laying your fabric like this on top of each other, you know. Then at the end of the day, you turn it back and trim off the excess. I did, I don't really want to make a full tutorial, but I believe you understand what I'm doing here. Okay, so we can make this tutorial another day. So if you want us to make something like this, please drop your uh, comments on the comment section. Anytime I have uh, that much time, I will create this design using this pattern, showing you how to turn it, as you can see. So thank you very much for coming to this tutorial. If you are new to this channel, please kindly subscribe. Turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day. Like this video, share to family and friends. Drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well. Thank you once again. See you in the next class. Bye.